Now, I love the case so much. We had this idea that he had lived in his case for that year when he was collating the information for, for Fantastic Beasts. In this movie, we get to see how he actually lives in London. Newt's home life is, to me, so endearing. I love Newt's house. It's kind of bare and boring. The ground floor is very much a show home. It's not really where his world is. It's only when you go down this sort of Escher staircase and you find this absolutely mind-boggling menagerie, a hospital for creatures. You see the guy's character. Bunty, the little ones are loose again. Newt is keeping, highly illegally, a whole array of magical creatures safe in his enchanted basement. One of the things that David and Joe and Stuart and I discussed was, does Newt sleep in his apartment? And that didn't make sense to me. He's a man that's much more at home traveling through the jungle or out in the field. Newt's the maverick. He goes out and deals with beasts and protects beasts. And I felt now that he would still go and live down in his hammock, down in the basement. It's such a great metaphor for Newt. On the surface, so unassuming, and deep down, so fascinating and strange and deep. Why do strange creatures love you so much? Well, there are no strange creatures, only, only blinkered, blinkered people. Bunty. We had this beautiful environment. It's a classic example of Newt has taken his townhouse in London and he's applied some magic and made it into the slightly exaggerated version of a Georgian basement. But it's still got that architecture, the arches, the bricks have all been worked out. We've done all that exactly as it would be, but we've just made it huge. And for me, the stairs remind me slightly of the moving stairs in Harry Potter. So there's a slight nod to that. 